welcome back everyone, Toys Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another Batman the Reanimated Series video, and today, I'm very excited. We're looking at Batman the Animated Series, and that was on Fox Kids, now we're moving over to Kids WB for the new, new Batman Adventures wave one and this one comes courtesy of my friends over at mcfarland toys i am very stoked on these didn't have any of these nearly 10 years ago already right if you can believe it i do have batman but the rest yeah i'm really looking forward to checking these out finally but with bruce wayne batman such a, a stellar redesign right so elegant so simplified and it does translate pretty well to plastic. It's one of my favorite Batman figures. And thus, we're gonna see how this new one stacks up to the prior one that I own. And here's the barcode for this TNBA Batman. Give it about two weeks or so, probably right before March, and you should start seeing these shipping out. Now, we do have Harvey Dent Two-Face, which he didn't get much of a redesign, kind of a, just a sprucing up sort of deal to better match the art style, but Two-Face shown all over the box in that very coloring book look, right? All that artwork. Here's the barcode for TNBA Two-Face. Now, speaking of two, you get a little bit of a two-pack with this Killer Croc and Baby Doll. And that's right there. That's a two pack if I've ever seen one. Baby Doll looking as creepy as she should, right? On the back side, you get to see the lovely artwork Killer Croc, Baby Doll. And of course, when these start to hit, you can go ahead and scan in this barcode for Killer Croc and Baby Doll. And keeping with the twos theme, well, there is going to be two. Batgirls. Now keep in mind one of them is a platinum edition. The standard from the show Batgirl. Blacks, yellows, a little bit of blue. Ton of accessories, mainly hands, but we're going to talk about that when it comes time. And then you have the platinum edition, purple, black, and yellow Batgirl. That is a little bit Batman 66 and also maybe something else. But again, more on that in just a few. Big old McFarlane Platinum Edition sticker right there on the box. And as usual with any Platinum figures, it's gonna be the same box. So it's always gonna look the same and then it's gonna have the same barcode. It's like a rare Chase Funko Pop. That's basically what their Platinums are. But in either case, this is gonna be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot redesigned cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Wave 1, the new, new Batman Adventures by McFarlane Toys with a little help from DC Direct. And now that you made it through Johnny Test and Hysteria, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you'll like. So, in starting everything off, in lieu of a Builder figure piece, like with the Target exclusive Batman the Animated Series line, the TNBA line will come with a cell replica. And while this is not really my cup of tea, it's actually really well done. It has all the episode information. It even has this little flappy right here, which you can bend up. And it's essentially a picture frame that can sit on your shelf with the corresponding figure. So you have Sins of the Father, Two-Face, and Batman. And that's really cool. I just love all the information that they provide. That's really well done. Then you have Love is a Croc with Batgirl and Killer Croc and Baby Doll. So really nice. The cell is nicely done. It is a reproduction, so keep that in mind. But they're nice and thick. They don't seem cheapy or flimsy, but I would prefer to build a figure piece. But speaking of Love is a Croc, that is the episode we're going to be talking about for the next, well, technically three figures with the Killer Croc and Baby Doll 2-pack. And like I said, these figures are reissues of prior released figures from about 10 years ago. Each of these figures come with a TNBA stand. It's actually a really decent stand, and it has one heck of a clamp on there. Watch your fingers, not even joking you. You can move the clamp up and down. It's very simplistic. I like that it has the TNBA logo on there, and I'll show you what it does in just a few because these actually stand on their own. Now, you do get Baby Doll's bottle. Not a whole lot to it, but yes, it exists. <laughs> now, Killer Croc was mainly the one that kind of used this 
bottle in many ways. We don't know why, but he does hold it quite well. But no, Baby Doll will not be able to hold the bottle. But he does come with a couple extra hands. They're nicely painted. You got the lines, you got the fingernails, and you can hold Baby Doll over the nuclear reactor and drop her to her doom if you really wanted to. Now, remember that scene when she goes to visit him in the prison cell with the chicken? You get the chicken. <laughs> And that's the kind of deep cut accessories that I loves to see. So yes, you get a full blown chicken that you can throw to Croc or better yet, have him hold and talk about how his numbers almost up. Now, baby doll herself. Now, this isn't going to be a immensely articulated figure, but it does a trick in one capturing the likeness of the TNBA rendition of baby doll pretty well, I have to say, and you got her little dress and her booties and everything else with some minimal articulation, which suits this type of character, especially when you pack her in with Crocs. So you get a little bit of movement in the head. The arms will basically just go up and down. They don't move out to the side. She has some waist articulation and then her little tiny feet will move up and down. Just wait for Two-Face. That's all I'm going to say. But she surprisingly stands pretty well for being this type of figure. Killer Croc, I'm surprised. He's actually pretty well done himself. And again, they have really managed to keep that look for Killer Croc. Now, right here, I know a lot of people are gonna go, oh, half his face is missing. Well, when DC Direct, DC Collectibles made this action figure line, they really did keep with those Bruce Tim designs. So he's always very slanty, very head forward, kind of hunched. And that's really how he's meant to be displayed, which I totally dig. But you just kind of get to be able to move his neck around, which is going to look weird as it is. But in getting him all just kind of situated, there's no peg holes on the bottom. And yes, there's no knee articulation. But that is keeping in the style of not breaking up that Bruce Tim angular design too much, which I can appreciate. He does have some solid articulation in the feet. It's very sturdy and it keeps him upright, which is the most important. Now, you're going to see that very old school type articulation, which again is about 10 years old. You get enough movement in the legs. He does have a fairly decent ab crunch, I will say, with some ab swivel up top. His arms... Everything about this Killer Croc, I really do like. I didn't necessarily like his redesign for the show, but I will say this does fit for a nice, cool-looking action figure. And just to point out, when you start moving his arms at the elbows, just go very easy, kind of get them going. Some of them might be stuck right out the box. Enough articulation in the head, the hands. And trust me, I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, they should have updated the articulation. Well, that's not the point of these figures. They're just basically reissuing them. But in posing him out... He is very sturdy, surprisingly. I thought he was going to go toppling over every two seconds. And then just to point this out, the greens of his body, let's say his main torso, is different from the type of plastic that they used for the arms. You can kind of see that more marbleization in the arms. So again, if that's something that bothers you, this may not be the croc that you need. But for all of you TNBA fans out there, I think he's one of the best of the line. I actually really like this, especially when you situate him there with Baby Doll, all the accessories, everything that these two have for that specific Love is a Croc episode. It's pretty well done. Now, in keeping with Love is a Croc, we have Batgirls, plural, right? So you have the basic TNBA redesign of Barbara Gordon, and then you have this Platinum Edition version. So, both of them come with the exact same amount of accessories. You get a ton of hands for Barbara Gordon, Batgirl. Let me just say, every hand under the sun. Especially this one with the grapnel that, once again, just like DC Collectibles, DC Direct didn't paint, neither did McFarlane Toys, so it's cast all in yellow. Now with McFarlane, there's always weird choices, of course. So the original release of Batgirl came with the full grapnel. This McFarlane version only comes with the top part of the grapnel, and it is cast in black, so that's good. That's one good aspect, but you don't have the other piece, so it's kind of moot. Why is this in the box? Anyways, you get two types of batarangs this time around. We have seen the top, bigger, chunkier one before, and now we have the smaller one for Batgirl, which is my favorite. And to be honest with you, I really wish Killer Croc's jaw was articulated so he could munch on some batarangs and then spit it out. And as I said, the Platinum Edition Batgirl 
has the same exact accessories. The ones that are yellow are now purple for her. So there's no confusion on who comes with what. Now, the standard TNBA Batgirl is pretty cool. But one thing I want to point out, if you get to go through a couple of them on the shelf, make sure you get yourself a good-looking, well-painted one. Because if you look at the face on mine, if you can't guess it, one of the sides of her eye where her mask dips is misaligned. So it kind of looks like she has a black eye on one side. It's not that noticeable, but it will be if you get the wrong one. So that's all I see now. I'm surprised at the articulation. And one thing to point out is that with the prior TNBA DC collectibles action figures that they released, they were very much art pieces. And they're very much joints that you kind of have to go easy with. I am happy to say that with this type of plastic that McFarlane has gone with, they're very much toys this time around. I really didn't run into any problems except for around the elbows where I'll tell you most of these figures just go easy and they really do loosen up real quick. And as a bonus, nothing is falling apart. They're all pretty dang sturdy and that's really what I wanted to see. So with the exception of moving the head around, it's pretty solid articulation for this Barbara Gordon Batgirl. And for those of you out there not in the know, Batman Adventures number 12 featured the Batgirl Adventures with Harley Quinn's first appearance in comic books. It's a very well sought after comic. And lo and behold, in 2016, Bruce Tim did a variant cover for the Batman Adventures number 12, utilizing all the eras of these various characters, including a 66 Batgirl. So there you go. Batman 66, Batman Adventures, TNBA, it all fits, right? Now, I'll be honest with you, same exact articulation, same exact look. She does fare a lot better in the paint with that mask problem that I had on the regular version, but she's pretty stylistic. I actually do like her. I think she's pretty darn cool. Now, this totally reminds me of the Kenner slash, we'll say Hasbro days slash Mattel days when they had various variants versions of all the characters, including Batgirl. So it's kind of fun to have a very Kennerized version. But I will say this, Batgirl kind of tends to be the one that's a little bit more difficult to stand in some instances. So that's really where the stand will totally help you out. She does have a lot more articulation than a fellow Bat family member coming up. Let me tell you that. But it is very fun to pose her out. And with the exception of some wonky choices for some of the accessories, it's a pretty solid Bad girl. Now, moving on to Sins of the Father, which technically was the first episode, but not really because you had holiday nights. Anyways, Sins of the Father, awesome episode featuring Two-Face. And that was a great episode because it also introduced us to their version of Tim Drake. Now, Two-Face comes with several hands. You have the flesh tone hands, and then you have his mutilated, picking at its blue hands. And all of them hold the accessories quite nicely. And you get the gas mask. And if you're not familiar with Sins of the Father, the whole idea of the episode is that, well, Two-Face is going to gas the entire city of Gotham. So it's not a very nice Two-Face in the new TNBA. But the mask does fit on very nicely. No, he does not come with a gun this time around. Thanks a lot, Warner Brothers. But I'm sure you can dig into your parts drawer and find one for him. Two-Face does come with his pocket watch from that episode. It's nicely painted on the front. It's a weird glob of whatever on the back, but yes, it's when he's about to tell everybody that there's going to be a whole lot of dead people in Gotham City. And if you were wondering, yes, he does hold that pocket watch ever so nicely, so that's always nice to see, especially with these tiny little itty-bitty hands. He also comes with the bag that he needs to get from the airport, which houses the chemicals, but this time around... There's no chemicals. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having all those other accessories, right? Why didn't you throw the chemicals in there, McFarlane Toys? Perhaps that mold is missing. I know that a lot of companies run into that. But hey, you can put all the accessories in that bag. That's cool. And it's just really cool because, yes, it does come straight from the episode when Two-Face is running down the tarmac and smacks that poor luggage cart driver, right? <laughs> Awesome episode. Definitely check it out. But yes, again, that's where the stand really comes in handy if you want to get him into more action poses. Two-Face himself. It's pretty nicely painted. I will say that out of all of these figures, I think the paint 
would be the biggest problem, and we have seen that with McFarland toys many times before. It's really not a huge issue, and they have managed to capture the look of Two Face for his TNBA style. But black and white is the name of the game. Most of the lines are pretty crisp. Sometimes, let's say on the back, that they kind of miss the the designated line all the way down. But for the most parts, yeah, it's pretty good, except for. Well, that articulation that's very antiquated at that point, I know that's going to throw a lot of people off. They are ratcheted, so he's pretty sturdy. Again, nothing loose, nothing you have to worry about. And he's pretty fluid, nothing broke, nothing snapped. His feet are so bizarre, but it's keeping in that style. Baby feet. It's probably just one big toe in there, however that works. Now, right here, just something to point out. On this particular hand, he does have the coin. And unfortunately, they did not paint the coin to get some of the detail of his coin. So again, little instances of paint would have really gone a long way. You get plenty of articulation in the head, but go really easy with his big old tuft of hair right here. That's something I feel like you could snap it if you just turned it the wrong way. Very basic articulation, not a whole lot of movement out of this suited two-face. I'll be honest with you. It's very basic, it's very antiquated at this point, but it's very much in keeping with the style of Two-Face from TNBA, and that's what I appreciate it for. So I don't need a whole heck of a lot of articulation, I just want him to look this good. And speaking of looking good, this Batman is top notch, and I absolutely loved the redesign for the TNBA series for old Batman. He comes with so many hands, you won't even know what to do with them. But all of them, for the most part, serve a function, right? To hold all the other accessories. Now, you do get a Batarang. Again, nice attention to detail. That is the TNBA Batarang in an appropriate size. It's nothing too crazy. And he comes with the appropriate hand to hold said battering. So I definitely appreciate that. He also comes with a hand that holds the bat grapnel. Now, on the original version that I have, or at least the Batman, the series continues version, you could take the top part of the grapnel out. You can no longer do that. It's pretty much plastic in there, right? It's all one piece. And to be honest with you, with the minimal articulation in the arms because of that cape, you kind of have to think of Batman is on a rooftop looking down, and that's where he's firing the grapnel. And speaking of grapnels, just like the hand that's holding it, the singular version has the same deal where I would not recommend pulling the top part of the grapnel out. I would tell you probably once you have it out, it's not going back in. But it's up to you to try. But Batman himself. Now, this was definitely one that I wasn't going to get. I was going to stick to the characters I don't have, but I'll show you that this one is a little bit more plasticky feel, more toy feel, as opposed to a more art piece feel. And nothing about this feels cheapy that it's going to break, but I will tell you, it's very minimal on the articulation, especially with the cape. Keep that in mind. And go very easy with the elbows until you start getting them a-going, right? He'll spin at the elbow. Plenty of articulation there, except for when you want to get the arms a-going. It's unfortunate of the cape, right? Spins at the wrist, spins at the waist. He's got that cool pouch belt, which, again, absolutely loved. He'll kick out about that much. He will go out to the side. He's got that knee articulation, which he will spin at the knee, and he'll spin at the boot as well. But as always, like I said, go very easy until you learn the articulation. The feet actually have peg holes, so if you have a stand, you can totally utilize that. The cape, very rubbery. You can pull the head off. And I'll show you, you can actually swap the capes if you have other versions of this TNBA Batman, which doesn't look too shabby. But overall, just in terms of the design, the look, everything, it's awesome. And I know a lot of people out there are going to go, well, they should have updated the articulation. I'm sorry. But if you grew up with this version of the TNBA Batman, you're going to look at this new McFarlane one in any era of which they've released this figure and just go... Wow, that would have been amazing back in the day, right? Because my God, this actually rocks. And just to show you, 
The difference between the Adventures Continue TNBA Batman, we'll just say, has a little bit of cell shading, whereas these definitely do not. And I think a lot of people are going to celebrate that. I do love the look of this one, but they do actually have different capes, of which you can pop the heads off and swap the capes if you like. And to be honest with you, the cell shaded one with this more black cape, no cell shading, works really well. And puts a little cell shading on the McFarlane one. So have at it, peoples. It's a solid Batman. Highly recommend this Batman. All the accessories, the way he looks, you can utilize the stand, get him standing in all those crazy positions. He is definitely awesome. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new first wave of the new, new Batman adventures by McFarlane Toys. And again, thank you to McFarlane Toys for sending this out for the purposes of this video. It's a solid first wave. There are a few hiccups with paint. Let's be honest, there's a couple, why did they do this with some of the accessories like for Batgirl, but through and through, minus the whole, you can't have guns with the characters, right? That would have been nice. It's a pretty solid lineup and much better to what we saw with the Batman the Animated Series. So fingers crossed, Batman the Animated Series gets a better wave too, and I'm really looking forward to see where they take the TNBA line. So you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything the new Batman adventures, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, let's say this. If they had done a bill of figure as opposed to the cell reproductions, which character would you have liked to see them tackle from TNBA? Anybody. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.